Are you ready for the perfect opportunity? Hello and welcome back to Meet Mozart. I'm Angie. That's Mozart. And today we are counting down the days until opera companies are able to give live performances with our top five best operas for first time audience members. So let's hop to it. Number five, Rossini's Barbiere di Siviglia or Barber of Seville. This opera is just a lot of fun and it's a great way in because it showcases a lot of the common character archetypes that you'll find in other operas as well. So we have the lovers that can't be together because of a grumpy old man. We also have a really fun, awesome sidekick. Figaro, 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 Figaro. Figaro. And as you may have guessed, some of the pieces from this show have made it into pop culture, so you're not going to be just sitting there for three hours without hearing a familiar tune. Really though, the show is just a lot of fun to watch, and it's a lot of fun for the performers to perform. So it's an experience where everyone is just having a good time and really just enjoying the piece and enjoying the music. Plus, the libretto comes from a three-part trilogy by Beaumarchais, and although Rossini only set the first part of this trilogy, Mozart went on to set Le Nozze di Figaro, or The Marriage of Figaro, and modern American composer John Cordiamo set part three in his Ghosts of Versailles. So if you're really loving these characters and you want to see how their journey unfolds, you can continue to experience the story through a lot of great operas as well. Number four, Bizet's Carmen. Carmen is an amazing opera, and it's one of the most quoted by pop culture. So like Barbara of Seville, you're going to be sitting there hearing tunes that you've heard off and on in various ways. But unlike Barbara of Seville, this piece is a severe tragedy. And if you are someone who loves stories about anti-heroes, this is definitely the opera for you. It's the story of a reckless, passionate romance that goes terribly wrong, and nearly every character in the piece is in some way to blame. It also displays a really interesting musical trend that was going on in France at the time. Although the text of the opera is in French and it was written by a French composer, the story takes place in Spain. And at this time period, there were a lot of French composers that were fascinated by Spanish culture and by Spanish music. And so Bizet integrates a lot of these Spanish themes and dances and rhythms, and that really makes for an interesting piece because there are some wonderful numbers that are wild dances with these Spanish rhythms that are really fun to watch and really get the blood pumping. Number three, Donizetti's L'Elisir d'Amore, or Elixir of Love. Now this is not one that's going to have a lot of tunes that you already recognize, but there are some gorgeous melodies in this comedic opera. The storyline is the old nerdy guy is in love with a girl, girl's kind of a jerk, doesn't like nerdy guy back. Then a medicine man comes to town selling an elixir of love that he promises will make anyone fall in love with you, even though it's actually just wine. Of course, nerdy guy buys the elixir, drinks it, and in the meantime, everyone in town finds out that the guy's uncle has died and that he's now a wealthy heir, so all the women are starting to fall in love with him, they're falling all over themselves around him, he thinks the elixir has worked, medicine man is very confused because he knows it's just wine, and the girl that he likes is jealous, so I think you can understand where it's going to go from there, but it's just a really silly really fun story with some great characters, beautiful music, and it's just a night of the opera that's just a really good time for everyone. Number two, Mozart's Don Giovanni. Now this is also a piece that's not going to have a lot of music that you're probably already familiar with, but it is such a great story and it's one that even we as modern audiences, even if we don't have the full historical context for it, we'll still be able to connect to and understand. And in terms of the libretto, it's really just a study on great writing. The story follows Don Giovanni, or Don Juan, as he's commonly known, 
and he is the ultimate womanizer. In fact, the very first scene of the show, we see him coming out of a woman's bedchamber, and we're sort of left to guess whether his presence there was consensual or not. But either way, her father catches him, and they duel, and Don Giovanni murders him. So from the very first scene, we've established that Don Giovanni is definitely a murderer, and probably a rapist. So the stage is completely set for this to be a dark tragedy, and of course it really is. But the librettist da Ponte starts infusing these other character archetypes from opera buffa, or comedic opera. And we see this primarily through Don Giovanni's manservant, Leporello. Leporello is constantly getting caught up in Don Giovanni's schemes. And either he's left to clear up the messes, or he's directly involved in the hijinks in these really comedic ways. And so we as an audience are laughing at what's going on, at the deception and the trickery and the funny situations that they're getting themselves in, but at the same time there's this moral umbrella over the piece that even as you're laughing you begin to wonder what exactly you're laughing at. And if you think that the humor is there because Mozart and De Ponte didn't take Don Giovanni's actions seriously, don't worry about it because Don Giovanni pays for his sins in one of the most epic endings in all of opera. And that brings us to number one, Verdi's La Traviata. In my mind, this is the piece that defines the genre. It really has everything that comes to mind when you think about a great Italian opera. The music is amazing and it beautifully showcases the talents of each performer. Plus there's this fabulous tragic storyline. Once again we have a story of two lovers who can't be together, but this time it's because of social constructs. And unlike Barbara of Seville, where the lovers can't be together because there's one bad guy keeping them apart for sinister reasons, in this piece, everybody is operating from good intentions. So even if you don't like what they're doing, you can't completely hate them for doing it. And in fact, they even come to points where they realize the error in their ways. But unfortunately, something much larger than social constructs wreaks its havoc in the end. With Verdi's gorgeous, heartfelt music, it's a piece that really takes you through every single emotion. And it leaves you with a sort of catharsis that we all love to experience through art. So clearly there are a lot more operas out there that could have been included on this list that are absolutely great, and it was really difficult to pare it down to just those five. But I also wanted to be sure to include pieces that are very regularly performed by opera companies so they would be really easy to find as well. If you have some thoughts on some great operas for beginners, or if you'd love to share the story of the first opera you saw that made you fall in love with the genre, please, we want to hear all about it in the comments below because, of course, the more information and inspiration we can share with one another, the better. But that's all from us for now. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, push all the fun buttons, including that little notification bell so you don't miss our next video. And we will see you next time. Bye.